Hello, we are the Crooks. Um, we're very excited to be doing this. Um, it's a very special day. And the song is called the, just kidding, it's called Teddy Pom Pom. La 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 We love Community Media Day 2023. <laughs> um, the song is called The Court Jester.
just answer a stubborn heart. in the building this is WBCA presents on the Boston Neighborhood Network it's Community Media Day 2023 and we are here with the Croaks thank you so much for being here yeah how, how are you doing how does it feel to be on TV it feels crazy seeing ourselves right there <laughs> so where did the name the Croaks come from frogs yeah I guess Do you have a favorite frog anyone mmm of toad, frog and toad, I guess. I like the little blue poisonous one. These are some great frogs. <laughs> so how did you all how did you all meet? How did you all get in a band together? Love of frogs? Anna and Haley like started the band. That this is like their main project, I guess. So I feel like you could <laughs> speak on it to mass art and we met as freshmen and we played in a couple of different iterations of this together and then um, Allie joined us and yeah Alex <laughs> Alex is here too <laughs> we usually have Denver but Denver is I don't even know where he's on a voyage Virginia yeah he's on a voyage <laughs> so we have Alex today well you're on a voyage yourselves here too at WBCA and BNN <laughs> So I, I saw online that you describe yourselves as ragged post-hot rock. <laughs> and I, I'm very intrigued by that. And I just I want to know, what, what does it really mean? Well, it's how I described Dominic Monaghan in Lost. He's ragged post-hot because he like looks kind of hot, but not really. You know, <laughs> and he's like kind of like disgusting and like abandoned, you know. So that was, that was a description for him. And then, but it could we be us it. too. Yeah. Do you think of yourselves as abandoned or disgusting? Uh, in a positive way, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, abandoned and disgusting in like a really cool way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see it. <laughs> so what what were those two songs you just played? Um, the titles. Teddy Pom Pom and the Court Jester. Great. And uh, you know how you know what's your songwriting process? How do you how do you come up with these things? Um, well, just like noodling, I feel like. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's like theme-based lyrically. Um, Teddy Pom Pom's about a deranged Pomeranian from a, an old British like dog training show. So I like wanted, he needed like a space, I think in the music world, so I gave him that. But otherwise, it's just like, I don't know. I think we were inspired by medieval um, sounding stuff, so like musically, I think that's where a lot of the songs come from, is just trying to come up with like fun medieval sounding riffs. So is that something that sort of drew all of you together, that medieval influence? Yeah, we all have that in common, I think. Yeah. And do you, all, do you all dress like this every day? Is this kind of your medieval lifestyle or just for special occasions? I do dress like this at work. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great look you all have going. <laughs> yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of culty, but we're not trying to do that necessarily. It's uh, like a cult, but friendlier. Yeah. 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 You know, less, less of all that. Uh, what song do you have coming up next? 
Cuddy Hunk Isle. Well, we can't wait to hear it. I'll get out of your way, and we have Cuddy Hunk Isle from the Croaks coming up next on WBCA Presents. That one's about an island off of Massachusetts uh, called Cuddy Hunk Isle, believe it or not. Um, shout out if you live there, but you probably don't. <laughs> they don't allow cars, I guess. This is, all, this is all from Wikipedia. I've never been there. But uh, I dream of a world where cars don't exist, so... Yep. <laughs> um, this one is about a turtle. 
two turtles. again we're with the croaks on wbca presents on the boston neighborhood network that was i can't claim to have heard many songs inspired by a turtle but i think that was my favorite <laughs> D it was a turtle you knew personally or just the whole genus this is Haley's story Tur personal turtle mother mother owned turtle yes. i think unless i have to hear yes uh, she had two turtles their names were susie and tenderblood um, and I think they had some interturtural drama, so. Interturtural? <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't, I thought they were a peaceful species. No, uh, not these ones. So you, uh, back in August, I believe, released your first album, is that right? Congratulations. How, what was that process like? Arduous. <laughs> it was fun. It was, oh, yeah. Is. Crocus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there he is. So Crocus is is a a, fe a man, a fellow. Yeah, he's like a guy. He's like he's a creature. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was it was long. We recorded it ourselves, which was like financially a good idea, but time wise, it like took a really long time because we were just like going about our lives still the same. So it was hard to block out time, and then it's like oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Like, I'm not paying for a studio. Who cares? So it took a while, but I feel like I learned a lot and, like, got a lot better at performing for microphones and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm sure. Are, are you touring the album around now, or how does it feel now that it's out? feels good. We're touring Massachusetts. <laughs> what better we place work. to tour? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you all from like around Boston originally, or? Uh, I'm from California. Oh, oh yeah, I've, I realize you, you don't have a mic, so you've sort of been silenced, but this is, it's community media day, so we can't have anyone being silenced. So you, what did you say? I'm originally from California. So th and all the rest of them are? I'm from Florida. Flo okay, so everyone's <laughs> coming to the, the mecca that is Boston. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> and do you have anything you've been dying to say back here on the drums? I love the croaks. <laughs> <laughs> and don't we all? Uh, 
So yeah, th this is WBCA Presents. It's Community Media Day. When did you all learn that Community Media Day existed? Uh, I learned it when we got asked to play this. <laughs> and that not that beautiful? Yeah, it's awesome. It's really, yeah, it's a really cool thing to be like a part of. Yeah, I feel like community is like extremely, extremely important. Like in the arts especially, but just in general and also right now, like mm -hmm. everything happening in Gaza, like I feel like we need to just take care of each other and like um, maybe stop doing genocide. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really, really is illustrating how important everything is, you know, at Community Media Day, the croaks, you know, just performing, getting words out there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for doing this and, yeah, it, thank and you having for being us. Here. Forty years is pretty sweet. Yeah, you know, I heard the word medieval when you <laughs> submitted your music, and and here you are now. You know, anyone out there can submit their music to WBCA. We've got. Uh, yeah, anyone out there can submit their music to WBCA one hundred two point nine FM. Uh, we're on the internet, we're on the airwaves, and you can submit your music, have it played, and maybe even come here to the Boston Neighborhood Network in Boston and perform your music live. Who knows what could happen? <laughs> and uh, what, what are you performing next? We're performing Rainbow Trout and Loch Ness Lady. Okay, well, I'll let you get to it.
This one? What's this one about? Wouldn't they like to know? This one is about um, a uh, lady who is uh, mystical and elusive and um, Crocus chases her and she doesn't like it. And um, uh, this is sort of the, the, uh, the chase, if you will. I see now what is true I love to hear refuse Is there another man If I can't have you, no one can
on WBCA presents on Boston Neighborhood Network, WBCA 102.9 FM and Boston Neighborhood Network on the television. We've got the Croaks in the studio once again. Wonderful music every time, every, <laughs> every song uh, just gets better and better. Now, you know how there's a lot of debate about whether a medieval child could survive eating like a flaming hot Cheeto or like a Jolly Rancher? You know that? So, so you've... I see it around, the, you know, the... It's a McDonald's spray. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so you've kind of got this, this medieval <laughs> thing going on. Do you think you could survive eating a Jolly Rancher? I've done it's it. It's so healthy. <laughs> it's so good for you. <laughs> so I would be like a <laughs> superhuman. I think yeah. medieval children are a lot hardier than we give them credit for. I think... If you went up to the average person on the street and asked them to hunt their own dinner, I don't think they could do it. So <laughs> I don't know. Always focusing on the ones that didn't make it and all the ones that somehow mm. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you think again with the you know kind of this this medieval ethos? Do you think it, it obviously it's in your music? Do you think, but do you think every moment of your life there's something there that sort of is thinking of a simpler or perhaps far more complex time, or do you think, how does, how does this music tie into, you know, how, how you are every day? I, I would say overall living in 2023 is probably a lot better. Um, although, I don't know. But, um, I mean, we, we try to be a little, we, we have stew. And um, <laughs> like going into the wear some and stuff. pantaloons, yeah. <laughs> but I, I like being to able to like vote and stuff. So, <laughs> what, what is a wimple? It's like the thing that who even wore them? Like nuns, nuns. the thing that nuns wore. It ha it's like just like a hood, kind of. It's yeah. Cool. Do you do you make a lot of clothing? Sometimes. Yeah, so many I creative pursuits, I guess. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard, like having to work and then having a band and then also doing that. But when I have time, yeah. Hmm. And I get back to the music. I mean, obviously, you're all very talented musicians. Uh, at least, Thank you. at least I think so, and I'm sure everyone out there <laughs> does. Uh, how did you all get into music? We can sort of go down the line. How did? What got you into this? How did you wind up here? Um. I think that I just like always enjoyed playing music. Um, and when it came time to go to school, I was just like, I want to be anywhere other than Florida. <laughs> so I applied to a bunch of music schools, and then I got into Berkeley, and it's really awesome. I love Boston. I'd like, pri primarily, bass is not my thing, so it's fun to get to do this with, like, people that have a similar creative vision. Um, but yeah, we just, like, kind of found each other, I feel like. They saw us, or like Haley and Anna saw us playing um, with our other band, and I think we have like a similar creative like mindset for it. So then it just kind of like clicked, and yeah, that's how I got here. <laughs> what other instruments do you play? I mainly sing and like play guitar, but I love bass. So. And then how, how did you, uh, what instruments do you play? How did you find this? Um, I took like piano and guitar lessons when I was a kid and never practiced. And I think I went to one guitar lesson and then quit. Um, but yeah, I just like taught myself on YouTube and it was like all I did every day, all day. Um, and I was like, you don't need to go to music school. Why would I do that? So then I went to art school instead. <laughs> So, yeah, and like I met Haley there, and Haley was of the, I guess she, she can tell her own story, but Haley was in the mindset that you like meet band members at art school. So we, that happened, and then, um, yeah, yeah, it's been like six years, but I would say the Croaks have really only existed for like two years, for real. And now for yeah. your own story. Um, yeah, I grew up with like a musical family, grew up going to shows with my parents and everything. Um, I played the viola in grade school, like in my school orchestra, and I liked it, but 
I wanted to play guitar because I thought it was cooler, but um, <laughs> I picked up, I got my dad's old like grade school violin um, a couple of years ago and I realized I could hook it up to pedals and I really like being able to do that um, and kind of try to play it like a guitar. Um, and yeah, I went to Mass Art uh, mostly to study textiles, but also to meet music types. Um, and Anna and I had a band called Rat Slap and played, you know, little house shows around Alston. And then uh, we started the Croaks during t around 2020. And yeah, it's been going strong since then. Hmm. With textiles, do you also make your own clothing, or? Yeah. yeah we do. <laughs> or who who are you wearing today, all of you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll name drop. I'm wearing Careworn. Yeah, it's I. You don't see bloomers a lot these days, but it's I. I think there should be more of it. I agree. Yeah. And then, uh, as always, we don't want to neglect the drummer mm. just because he doesn't have a mic. What What is? How did you get here behind these drums? Um, I guess growing up, like around six, I started doing like piano lessons, and then a little down the line, I was more like going towards dance. But then, like a little after that, I went back into music and then I guess I first learned drums through Lego Rock Band actually so <laughs> shout out Lego Rock Band for helping me with that um, but yeah like just doing drums through that and then learning more and more instruments and like getting into a community where everybody's into music like really just like helps you helps bring you into that world so I'm thankful for that yeah yeah it sounds like you're kind of all drawn together by all having you know all different sorts of creative pursuits but it kind of all comes together, you know, in music. Mm -hmm. Do you have, um, who are your influences? Do you all have kind of certain ones that really drive the Croaks music or? Yeah, we definitely, um, I grew up listening to a lot of like older, you know, 60s, 70s music. And I think we were really inspired by the kind of like progressive folk scene, especially that one out that came out of like Canterbury, England in the 60s, uh, bands like Comus. Um, Fairport Convention, the Pentangle, stuff like that. Um, but, and kind of more just rock and punk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like we like musicians who write weird songs. That's like the through line, I guess. Who's the weirdest musician you, that you're inspired by? Focus. Yeah, we love Focus. That's why we named, because Focus has an album called Hocus Pocus, so we named our album Crocus Pocus. Now, I, I hate to admit I'm not familiar with them, but what, what is it that makes them the, the most out there? He, like, whistles through his nose, kind of. Do you do that in any of your songs? <laughs> it's an acquired Alex has a little skill. trick up her yeah. sleeve in the next song, though. The next song that we're going to play also, I don't think I've said this to you guys before, but it reminds me a lot of, um, it's, I think that they're like a German band called like Queenex. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, like with a K. And they Lilliput. used to be called Lilliput. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah, the next song, Big Bug, <laughs> reminds me <laughs> of that a lot. Like, just like punk, like lady rock stuff. It's like really, I feel like that is like crook inspiring to me. Yeah, I did notice that in your music, that you're, you're mixing, you know, punk and rock with the more folk side of things, and obviously those are always, you know, related, but what do you think it is about those two sounds together that you really like? It's nice to rock. People, <laughs> people like to rock. I don't know. Yeah, playing just folk is boring, and playing just rock is too tiring. Yeah. <laughs> it's gives it kind of gives it some contrast, gives you some relief. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what are what, do you have any influences? Let's go back to the drummer. What what's your name again? Alex. Alex the drummer. What are what are your influences, drumming or otherwise? Um, well, one of my favorite drummers is Yusef Days. He's he's um, European and he comes from like uh, Jamaica, I think. And you know his his intricacies are just they just inspire me every time I watch him. But more focusing on medieval stuff, I really like um, Celtic music, like like Celtic harp and like Irish fiddle and stuff like that. So, listening to that has helped me um, 
adapt and become more a part of this genre, I would say, helping like with playing this genre. Yeah, I mean, I guess as the drummer, you're kind of bringing together, you know, the folk and the, the rock side of things, because I guess not all folk music necessarily has a full drum kit in it. Right, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta listen and adapt and play what sounds the best. You know. And it, it sounds the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how do you, what do you think when you're we're performing live versus performing to record for an album, how do you think, how does that feel different? Do you... Do you write songs and play them live and then later you might put them on a recording or do you work the other way around or how does that process go? Um, at least with the croaks, it's definitely, we write a song and we practice it and we play it live and then we'll record it. That seems to be the trajectory. We have like three or four new songs now and we've played two of them and we'll probably record those, so. Yes, is there an album two in the works? Yes. We have an idea for like a 15 minute uh, song about a clam digger. Oh, now that I can get into. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Is that, is it based on? In our minds, on, it's really good. <laughs> do you have an experience with a clam digger or is this another Wikipedia rabbit hole or how do you, how do you find, how do you get to a 15 minute song about a clam digger? Inspired by uh, some outsider art that is very dear to us. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, an artist that we came across that has written that phrase and has drawn something mm -hmm. to go with that phrase, and it rocked our worlds. So we're gonna write a song about it. And now we have to do it because we said we would. Yep. On TV. Here we go. So yeah, Fifteen. Heard, heard it here first, maybe. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's, it's it's cool to hear that you're not just inspired by other musicians, but by writers or or outsider artists and all sorts of things. Are there is there a are there paintings that inspire you? Other kinds of artists that you kind of try to translate into music. Yeah. There's um. I feel like it's just random stuff. Like, Cuddy Hunk Isle, production-wise, was inspired by a painting. That is my wallpaper. It's called The Blue Grotto, and I don't remember who painted it. Um, but, I mean, stuff like that, for me, I don't know about anybody else. Yeah, I think so. I feel, like, pretty inspired by, like, just, like, visual art in general. More specifically, like, abstract art, I think, is really inspiring. Um... Yeah, sometimes I'll like make like little ambient things and I feel like ambient music and like abstract art play off of each other. But yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> Any medieval art? Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a bunch of like medieval paintings of like people with squirrels as pets that I've been liking a lot lately. <laughs> With like little like silver chain like bracelet to collar like connector things. Mm. So funny. So cute. Yeah. Yes, you're really, really bridging centuries and decades, musical styles, doing it all. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do you have? We have a little bit more time. Do you have two more songs, maybe, for us? Not to put you on the spot, but. Uh, I mean, we have one song with everybody and we have many songs with not everybody so it's up to you well if somebody is up for doing it i don't know who wants to maybe mm -hmm. there's a very long drum solo but um <laughs> if anyone wants to do one we we've got the time and we'd love to hear another one okay well uh we could do You can surprise us if you want. Yeah, maybe we'll surprise you. That sounds good. And I, I do. Yeah, I do just have to ask. So this next one is called Big Bug. I is it based on a true story? Is there a big bug out there? I think it's an experience that many people have shared. So it's sort of a universal yeah. story. It's yeah. for all the big bugs out yeah. there. 
They should be very afraid. Yeah, we're, we're exposing them yeah. and their agenda. Well, I can't wait for that. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you get to it. This is WBCA Presents on the Boston Neighborhood Network. It's Community Media Day, and we want to thank everyone out there, the Boston community, for helping us do what we do for the past 40 years at BNN Media. And thank you so much for being here, the Croaks, and thank you for watching. Happy Community Media Day, and time for the, the big bug. Big bug. Big bug. Okay, okay, well, um, surely we could play another song. We usually don't play any songs after that. Um, <laughs> but we can if you want us to. Um, 
Allie and Alex are dipping. Um, what should we play? What should we play? Let's play Big Bog. We have a clickbait song called B Big Bog that we wrote after Big Bug. Um, yeah, might as well. Diana, that's good. You're in tr oh, you want us to do it? Okay, we yeah, we'll do it. That'll do it. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> We did not practice that, and we haven't played that in many, many, many a time, many months, so. But it happened. But we did that. We just did that. <laughs> cool. So long, everybody. Thank you for having us. Yes, this was really fun. This was like a good time, for real. Um, oh, can you still hear me? I don't know. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.